game is with the most successful manager in the history of British football. It is Sir Alex Ferguson. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. You too, John. And a massive fan of snooker. Yes, I am. For a little boy. Yeah. Played when I was seven, eight years of age in the local clubs in Govan. Yeah. You know, Saul's been there. Yeah, and yet someone, as Jason was telling me, did you have a snooker table at Patodri in the gym or something? Yes, I did, yeah. I yeah, played that a few times. Caught a few of them idling in there when <laughs> they were going to track. <laughs> right, go on, then we'll let you break off. We know you're right, a, a competent player. <clears throat> How's the speed at, pace of the ball? Oh, you just, oh, look at this. He's, oh, he's just oh, tested, fast. Test, he's tested the table. It's faster than my table. Is it? Oh, yeah. Well, hopefully this won't be quite as competitive as when you play your brother in the house, because Jason oh. was telling me it gets a bit serious. I, agony. <laughs> Well, that's not that quick. No, that's not too bad. That's about it. So you've watched the snooker for what? How many years on the TV? Have you, have you watched been... it every year. Every year. Well, all the competitions, you know, usually. So, Particularly with the World Championship, yeah. Yeah. So you started the 80s, watching the eighties on the TV with Dennis and Ray Ray yes, and Steve and yeah, everybody. Yeah, and I know Dennis and I played Dennis and and uh, the, the boy Swales. Joe Swales. Joe yeah. Swales, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Played him in a charity game once. I'm trying to open them up and leave you in, but as usual, I've played safe. Oh, me. That was near. Sir Alex, I notice you've actually brought your own cue. Now, this is quite professional. Oh. What's, what's the history behind this cue you've got? Well, this was presented by Ken Dogger to, to me when I retired the first time. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened and when he, he came he's back? He's never phoned me again. <laughs> <laughs> never heard from him again. <laughs> he's probably won't pay for it. Oh. <laughs> uh. See, that's what I'm saying. I'm I'll buy you your glasses, yeah, it's difficult. You, we should have got Dennis to lend you his glasses. Yeah. Yeah, you need the upside down glasses. Do you want me to hold them for you, Sir Alex? There we go. Now, it's not just the queue. You've, you've got your own table in the house. Yes. You collect your snooker memorabilia as well? Have you got anything I've got else? Uh, Dennis presenting me with the set of balls he, he won the World Championship with. Oh, from 85? Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's, that is a set to keep. It yeah. is. And I've actually, got... I was going to ask you about that because... I was doing a wee bit of digging, and that weekend, 27th, 28th of April, 1985, yeah. you were at Aberdeen. Won the league. Isn't that the... Yeah, you won back-to-back League, -back League of the Fourth, yeah. That's right. So what's your memory? Celtic, one each. Yeah. What's your memory of the whole weekend, then? We had to go to uh, supporters do up in Dufton, which is right in the very north, you know, up in near Speyside, up with the whiskey, all the whiskey's made. And we travelled up in the car, my, my physiotherapist and Cathy and his wife, we had to go up there, and that was been the Sunday of the final then. Mm -hmm. Sunday yeah, I remember, yeah. remember it well. I mean, I remember Steve Davis's shot they missed. Do you remember? Don't worry, Steve. The, Steve remembers it now. Does he? <laughs> the, ball, the ball was just a bit there, wasn't it? Yeah, was yeah. It? yeah. And he overcut it. Overcut it, yeah. And then, of course, we, we keep winding Dennis up, because every time he pots a ball now, we give it that one where he gives it. You know, all <laughs> <laughs> he give you a but you know, I think one. everyone is pleased that Dennis won it. I mean, Steve oh, was a great player. Absolutely. Without question. Absolutely. But, when a, an outsider wins it, you're, you're always voting for an outsider anyway, aren't you? <clears throat> and I knew Dennis anyway, so I had every, every reason to. From that era, when you think of the players that you most admired, who did you like, whose style did you appreciate best, would you say? Well, I think because he was Scottish and when Steve Henry had that role, yeah. he won it, what, seven years in a row? Oh, he's well, yeah. fantastic, Five, yeah. phenomenal achievement. That was, um, that was uh, I, I think I was more interested in what Steve was doing at that time. Now I came home on a flight a few years ago and I was with Paul Ince and he told me, and it still rankles with him by the way, but you uh -huh. used to play him competitive matches oh, on the yeah. snooker table, didn't you? And you used to beat him as well. I did. Um, he was playing um, <coughs> Viv Anderson at Mortram Hall, we were up there preparing for a game and players had been in the gymnasium and did the, the massages and all the rest and he's playing Viv and I says, I'll play the winner. And you know Ince. The governor, well, you want you go, you know, you don't know, you can't play. So he wins. I says, right, give me a start. He says, three blacks. So I beat him by black, one black ball. He says, right, two black balls. I beat him again. Viv Anderson says, I think he's having you on. So I'm in the house in the summer. Phone goes, Ince, what are you doing? I says, no, nothing. He says, I'm coming to play. So he comes with Claire, his wife. So I says to Claire, go and have a cup of tea with Cathy. He says, she says, no, I can't, I'm not, I'm not allowed to leave. I says, what? <laughs> so when she sits there, I battered him, <laughs> honestly. 
<laughs> battered him. And it turns into Bloom Square. Yeah. Well, honestly, it's not gone because when I saw him enough, honestly, it's still rankling. Good. <laughs> well, he can clearly play you, John, definitely. Oh, oh. You see, that's just pressure. That's pressure, definitely. But you oh. know, oh, flukes it. Um, so, Alex, in terms of what's hard about this game, what do you appreciate about what the top snooker players go through when they're out there in that arena? And there's really well, not much they can do when I the think, other fellas are I think at the this table. is an example of a, when it's a 1v1 situation, like in tennis or golf, the key element is concentration. But I always think that, okay, the, the, I think most players are playing in the World Championship, for instance, are fantastic talents, so they're, they're skillful players. If they were playing their pal, they would probably have 147 breaks, you know, whatever, they could do all that. But under pressure, the concentration is the so most, most vital thing of all. And you remember, you, sorry. No, go on. You remember the likes of Cliff Thorburn and um, the Welsh player? Terry uh, Griffiths. Griffiths. Yeah, I mean, they, they took ages. <laughs> well, I played Brian Robson last week at Cheltenham. Agony. Was it? It was, it was, it was a, week, a week in jail. <laughs> longer than a week in jail playing a shot so he was taking five minutes for his shot he's trying to put you off and that was that was Brian yeah. Robson determination concentration yeah. every shot and it's concentration I think is the most I don't know yeah. what you think no John. no I, listen believe you man I think it's, that, I think it's one of the things the first things that go mm. it's the hardest thing to maintain that's for sure of all the different sports not football not snooker who do you admire as a sportsman or a woman and why well I like people who probably mirror myself of the determination about things. We see Djokovic for instance. Yeah. He's a winner. Yeah. When you see him it's every trick in the book when he's not doing well he gets an injury. Yeah. <laughs> stops the flow of the game. You know, he's got a Mourinho thing about him, you know. Yeah. Um and I mean some great footballers you have to take, take examples of. I mean Ronaldo. Yeah. Oh. Well, I was gonna say to you by the way, I mean if there's a couple of players that you could pick from all the time that you've managed the players, who who were you most, you know, who did you most appreciate because they improved so much or they became what you well, thought they were? Ronaldo, Ronaldo was the biggest improvement really because he came as a young skinny kid at 17. Yeah. And yeah, he had all these things about him that were used to <laughs> criticise him about his diving and all the rest of it. But you know, once the players got about him in the training ground and that, he was fantastic. And then the most important thing for a great player is, is decision making. Mm -hmm. And that improved over the time. You know, he scolds and gigs. He, you have to say that those three. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Robson and Keane. You know, Cantona. They're, yeah. they're oh, great yeah, players. It, it was fantastic. We're very lucky that way. Um, but Ronaldo. The thing, you know, the thing as well, Sai, is that he was tough, wasn't he? He used to get oh, kicked all over. He was yeah. a toughie. You know, apart from all the things he could do, he used to he take plenty tough. of clattering. He was tough. I mean, uh, to, you know, the people say, right, who's the best player? No. And plenty of people quite rarely say Messi. Mm -hmm. You can't dispute that, that opinion. But you know about Ronaldo? Ronaldo could play for Millwall. Queen's Park Rangers, anyone, Doncaster Rovers to score a hat trick in a game. I'm not sure Messi could do it. Because Ronaldo's got two feet, quick, great in the air, brave. Messi's brave, of course. I think Messi's a Barcelona player. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, suits the style. Yeah. If you had been a coach of snooker, how would you have handled it? What would you have said? What words of wisdom, perils would you have given the boys before they went out? Well, I think, I think you've got to know the game a bit to you know, offer advice of that nature. You know, it's a... Um, uh, and I think that if you go to that part of um, the concentration part, of the consistency, and you, through that you can build the confidence of people. You, do, you, can't, you can't... The starting point is the concentration, right? and the consistency of performance. Other than that, you're, you have a job to, to build character, there's no question. Yeah. It's, not the, it's not just a matter of coaching players, yeah. it's about making them winners, yeah. and the mentality to win. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I always like to think I can see myself in players, you know? Um, oh, Al, you're playing rubbish. I don't have to worry about that. As, so as the concentration. <laughs> Has money changed in the game, do you think, in football? I mean, you're talking about whether you can spot a character who's, who's a born winner, whether they're playing for a tenner or whether it's £100,000 a week. Can you spot that quite quickly? I don't think the good players at money matters. Okay. I really don't. I don't think it matters one bit. I think winners are winners. It wouldn't matter if they're on 
ten pound a week and a million pound a week. Oh, I believe, strongly believe that. I think maybe from the lower levels, I think that a lot of players look upon a survival or look upon that as a earning, and it's important to them. But the real top players, I don't think it matters them. No, we don't. It's it's, it's it, it is either in you, isn't it? I think I think you, I think some people are just they just want to win, don't they? They just want to win. Yeah, definitely. But because I mean, sorry. because of the amount of money that's coming in now, do you, do you think that it's actually changed? the way managers have to manage. Looking back at the start of your management career, would you change anything now, knowing what you know? We you have to change, today? we have to accept change. It happens in weeks, for instance, sports science changed a lot in my time, and, and you, have to, uh, you have to embrace that, look upon the good parts of it. You know, I always think that what I didn't want was gimmicks. I, I said that to the medical staff, I said it to the, the sports science, don't bring me gimmicks. You know, something that's substantial works and improves us. Um, that that has been a big change. The change that, that maybe people look upon is, is there too much money in the game? Well, you know, the best players deserve to get paid because if you look at yeah. individual sports like yeah. tennis players or golfers, the money they earn, I don't see why top fielders shouldn't get paid what their quality, their, their, their talent deserves, yeah. really, to one's way. Yeah. And I, I don't think that's wrong. The area in which we all worry about is where this new deal for the, the, the billions of pounds that's going to be going into football, where it actually goes, I think that there should be a lot into grassroots, into development of young players. Uh, I think that's going to happen. Um, and then we worry about player salaries going to a level that some clubs will suffer, you know, because they want to stay in the Premier Division. Agents will be wanting their, their share, and you know that's something we're going to have to deal with. Go on, I've left you in. Yeah, keep going. You're with me. Yeah. I've left you in. Thank you. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh. It's a hard one, that. that. The blue's not so bad now. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're allowed. <clears throat> now, is there any particular aspect of no longer being a manager that you miss? Um, you know, and uh, I mean, is, there any, the, is there any part of it you don't miss? I miss, I miss the staff, United. You know, they were yeah. great people. And the players, you, you've got to miss the players, you know. Yeah. Like, the dressing room sometimes is a fantastic place to be. The camaraderie, the, the humour, and you know the, the Mickey taking. You know yeah, you miss all that yeah. part. You know, and I miss winning. Well, you yeah, know, absolutely. We're, we're all into win. <laughs> we're all into win. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. Right, okay. Get in. Oh, how did that not go in? Hit the post. There's something below there. <laughs> Good shot. I know you were saying you, you miss quick. winning, Green. but you know, you look back and it was at 49 major trophies. We were talking about this beforehand. Is there one, when you look back on it all, that not necessarily the most significant one of all, or the most important, but the one that you enjoyed most of all? Nothing which... will be Barcelona. Right. Nothing will be that. For me, it's fantastic. That was the pinnacle. Wasn't I mean, it? that was that was a fairy tale, wasn't it? Oh, it was fairy tale. I mean, three minutes to go, yeah. I'm starting to think what I'm going to say to the players, you know. And uh, there's a great UEFA video actually of the, the last three minutes following the referee. Right. Uh, the the Kalina. Do you remember him? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Telling Luigi, the yeah. And it's fantastic. You see his reaction, and then he goes and picks up the Bayern the Bayern players, you know, off the ground. You know, it's fantastic. Yeah. And they were gone. I mean, yeah. the first goal they were gone. Yeah. And there was no way back from them. No. That was an incredible piece of sport, wasn't it? Yeah. I, mean, see, I thought, you know, there's some games you see like Istanbul with Liverpool never be to, to be repeated, oh. you know, another one. But I know. I mean, that is one of them. That, you'll never yeah. see the likes of that again. No, it'll happen again. So you know the thing about Stuka, there's so many young players come breaking through, isn't there? Yeah. It's a bit like golf, actually. Because it's... Um, the opportunities for people to get a snooker table, a, a play snooker for young people is immense. It's a one, you, you're playing, you're playing against someone. The opportunity to practice is easier than a football, I think. Golf, I mean, you get a golf ball and a golf stick. I mean, the number of golf players are coming through nowadays. Yeah, yeah. And it's the same with the snooker, you say, you say, well, well, obviously, the great players are going to 
you know, they're going to be there, but they can be knocked out easily too. Yeah, yeah. you've got, you know, O'Sullivan, Murphy, Robertson, Selby, mm -hmm. Trump this year. Trump I mean, this year. Yeah. The five, you know, all fabulous players, and I, I think it's, I think it's, it's wide, wide open. It's wide open, yeah. Right, let's finish this off. Come on. He's not left them an easy one here. You went on a snooker me there, were you? <laughs> I was, I was trying to roll up into the black. I thought, I thought you're a nice fella. I mean, never leaves you, does he? Am I allowed to use chalk? Yeah. <laughs> you're trying to snooker me? I'm only saying nice questions. That's a great shot. Oh. <sighs> you want a bit of chalk? Yeah. God, do you want chalk as well? <laughs> Brought his own cue, thought he'd bring his own chalk. I know. I know, I would score. I have to say, by the way, he did give you a nice cue as well, Kenny. He did you a nice cue? Yeah, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, slow, slow, slow. This table doesn't do slow. No, I know. It's fabulous. Oh, well oh, played. Yes. Well played. You're getting it now. Yep. Do you get wrapped up in the matches when you watch them on the telly? Do you, watch, do you really get I've, wound I've up? I bet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that always helps. Shout, yeah. Shouting at the telly, yeah. Well. Yep. I was, um, remember Rory that won that tournament? Where was it? Augusta. No, no, Augusta. The one where he's no, behind no, he's BMW. Where he's, where he's behind. The last season. Last When he was six behind. He was five, six, yeah. and he had three yeah. woods. Yeah. Do you remember it? Yeah. Right to I'd backed him big that day. <laughs> and I'm saying, I need to phone him. <laughs> I need to phone him. <laughs> and then he produced it, and then he, he went win it. Yeah. I'll tell you, it was, it was fantastic. Yeah, he's yeah. a player of the boy, isn't he? Oh, he's good. Yeah, fingers crossed. You see, you know oh. the thing about you know the thing about Rory McIlroy, like these great players, he's got a genius about him. Yeah. yeah. He tries shots. You say to yourself, "What are you doing?" Mm. But because he's got that genius part of him, sometimes it doesn't work. But when it does work, unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, it's just so fantastic. Oh, he's on a roll. I'm oh, not gonna, oh, I'm not gonna interrupt going interrupt him. <laughs> Oh, well, I'll tell you what, there's the shot of the championship. Just <laughs> flicked the red off. Headlines. Absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. Is that it? Well, uh, yeah, done. well you've hammered me, what can I say? Uh, <laughs> well done. Yeah, thank fantastic. you so much for coming. It's been an absolute Pleasure. delight to and, speak uh, to you. Thank you so next. much, Right. <laughs> well oh, brilliant. Great stuff.